Well, today is Monday, February the 28th, our last day of February. And Sydney, this one's for you, wherever you are. Um, that's a classic Barry Manilow song for all of those of you that uh, don't know who he is or have never heard this song. Okay? Hey, you need to check out some Barry Manilow. Okay. I will. I'll listen to yeah. it. I'll wait. wait. Yeah. Go back. Go back. Hey, Barry bring Manilow. a tear to your eye. Okay. So, today we need to be talking about our fifth and final type and then just start doing practice out the wazoo. Tomorrow's going to be Princeton Review Day. Wednesday's going to be test. Thursday will be test corrections and I'm going to start in on acids and bases. Uh, Friday we'll do the actual lab dealing with this because so many people will be out on Thursday to cheer our basketball team on to uh, the finals. And is it wrong of me though to be a little bit jealous if they win a, a basketball championship because everyone's going to think that that's so much better than my bowling championship. We're a bowling school man. I am loyal to our team. We want Spain Park to be champions and everything. Okay, um, so step number five. This is our five types of KSP problems. Number five, which, uh, let's just even do it this way. It's called selective precipitation. Which salt will precipitate first? That's the question. So when we're looking at our problems, We're looking at our sample problems. There we go. It is right there. Two thousand and one, right at the beginning. We've done most of this one now. Okay, so this is an example right here of problem number four. You mix two things together, will a precipitate form uh, based upon this? And remember, we always have to do the dilution part first. This one was easy because it's 60 and 60, so we know that this concentration is just going to be half of what it was originally because you're going from 60 to 120. So it's 60, 120, it's our half. So this is going to be 0.02, this is going to be 0.015, and then you use those to do the KSP. On this one now, on, on part three, okay, this, by the way, is a common ion problem because calculate the value of lead in a saturated lead to which we have this much NaCl added. So what's my common ion in two? The chlorine, right? So this would be a common ion problem. We'll, we'll do that one after this just for practice, for you know, just for fun. Okay? But here now, if 0.1 molar NaCl is added slowly to a beaker containing both 0.12 molar silver nitrate and 0.15 molar lead nitrate at 25, which will precipitate first, the silver chloride or the lead chloride? Now notice you're given the KSPs again up here, both of them. Okay, so you've got to know the KSPs of both in order to be able to do this problem. So here's the deal. We draw it out. We have a beaker. Let's come down here. We have a beaker, and in my beaker I have some 0.12 molar silver nitrate and lead nitrate. Now, do you think the lead, I mean, pardon me, the nitrate is going to be of any importance? What are they going to be? What's the nitrate going to be? Just spectator ion. Okay? Because when I'm adding sodium chloride to lead nitrate, what's my precipitate going to be? Sodium chloride plus lead nitrate. 
Is it going to be sodium nitrate? Is it going to be lead chloride? Lead chloride. Yes. Okay, should not have been so totally quiet for so long. Okay? What about if I add sodium chloride to silver nitrate? What's my precipitate going to be? Silver chloride. Thus that we have lead chloride and silver chloride, KSBs. <coughs> Nitrates are all soluble. Alkali metals are always soluble. So I'm going to have some silver ions in here, and I'm going to have some lead ions in here, and then from a burette, drop by drop, I put in some NaCl. Now the reality is, is that the 0.1 molar of the NaCl is irrelevant. I'm going to show you why here in a second. So as I drop this in, the chlorine is going to want to go with the silver and the lead. But kind of like the silver, remember we did the yellow and the, the silver bromide and the silver iodide, the, the iodide preferentially bonded with the silver? We've got to figure out which one does chlorine really want to go to first? Who's first choice, who's second choice? Who's got the strict? And the less soluble one is the one that's actually going to be the first choice. The less soluble one is the one where it sticks together first and forms the precipitate on the bottom. The more soluble one, it sticks together and stays in solution. They stay apart and stay in solution. So we've got to figure out which one will precipitate with the lowest amount of chlorine being added. So we have to always solve, when you have these two, we solve for that concentration. So, for AGCl, let's just say the KSP of AGCl is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10th, right? It's equal to Ag plus times Cl minus. Well, we know what the Ag plus is, right? 0.12 molar. Now, it's not saying it's mixing, it's saying containing both point this and that. So that's the concentration in the, in the solution. We're not mixing, it's already mixed. So I can say it's equal to 0.12 molar times my Cl minus. So well, how do I solve for the Cl minus? Okay. So 18 divided by 12 is going to equal 1.5. So this is going to be 1.5 times 10 to the 1.2. It's going to be minus 1, minus 9. 1.5 times 10 to the minus 9th. Or I might be off by a power of 10. What did you say? What? I said 1.5 times 10 to the minus 9th. Yeah, I, I think it corrected my to, to, to Yeah, but, okay, now look, this is real important, okay? So on your calculator, you're right on the edge, you're right on the edge of what can be shown on the display. Your calculator rounds off that last digit. So 1.5 is gonna round to a two, 1.8 rounds to a two. So you need to go and put this into scientific notation which you can do with your mode. Go down here to science, hit enter, and then go back, how do I hit escape? Second function, quit, enter. Nope, still didn't do it. But that's, that's what's happening when you're right on the edge, so you need to really probably do everything in terms of scientific notation in order to get the right answer. Did anybody else do this one? What do I get? Okay. So once the chloride ion concentration, as we're dripping it in, once the chloride ion concentration reaches this, the silver is going to begin to precipitate out. Again, that's the whole point of KSP. This times this cannot exceed this. When it does, anything over that is going to precipitate. Okay? Now we do the same thing for the lead chloride. KSP of PBCl2, it's given in the problem, it's equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 5. But that's going to equal PB2 plus times the Cl minus 
squared, right? Because it's going to break up into PV2 plus plus two Cl minuses. Right? When this dissociates, it's going to go to PV2 plus plus two Cl minuses. And we, we've probably done that previously in the problem. So that's going to equal my PV2 plus is 0.15. times my Cl minus concentration, but this time it's squared. So solving for Cl minus, divide by 0.15 and then take the square root. I cannot do that one in my head. Point zero three. three times ten to the minus negative two. Two uh -huh. molar. So in other words, notice this number, even though it's my, is negative, this number is way bigger than this number. Which means you have to get a whole lot more chlorine in here, chloride ion in here, for it to precipitate than you do the silver. So which one's going to precipitate out first? This one is going to precipitate first because the required Cl minus is way less than the required Cl minus for this precipitate. I'm trying to read y'all's eyeballs if you're following along with me. It's, it's a tough read. Can you explain why you got the square to get Cl minus squared? Because Pb Cl2, when it dissociates into Pb2 plus, plus two Cl minus. Remember coefficients become your exponents in your equilibrium expression. Oh, you said the last two types of problems would be the hardest. I thought the third type of problem was like way harder than what Well, the sec this one is hard because you have to do a dilution first, then figure it out. So how do you figure that out? For this one or this one? But we, we did that one in class the other day. Okay, I'll come back to it. Well, there will be more practice ones on that. Okay, so when I'm looking at this, this one's going to precipitate first. Okay, because requires less Cl minus. That's your answer, that's your justification. This is your math. Now, a second part of this, it's not on this particular problem, but problems in the past. What is the concentration of the first ion to precipitate once the second ion begins to form? Once the second precipitate begins to form, okay? In other words, we now know that the silver chloride is precipitating first. So the question is, what's the silver ion concentration when the lead begins to precipitate? Well, when the lead begins to precipitate, what's the chloride ion concentration going to be? This, right? So when the chloride gets to this, when the chloride gets to this, what's the silver going to be? So, this is number four, okay? When PbCl2 begins to precipitate, Cl minus is equal to 1.03 times 10 to the minus two molar. So, Using the KSP, silver chloride, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10 is going to equal, what will the silver ion concentration be when the chloride ion is 1.03 times 10 to the minus 2? So what does AG plus equal there? 
really going to be about 1.8 times 10 to the minus 8. If we just did 1.0. 1.0. Okay, so now if we said percent AG plus remaining, how would I do that? What's percent? Part of the whole. What part? Percent silver remaining. How much remains? This much. How much did we start with? Point one two, right? So if we go 1.75 times 10 to the minus 8 divided by 0 0.120 molar Ag plus times 100, what do we get? Some incredibly small number, right? That's a percent. It's a small percentage. So only 1.5 times 10 to the minus 7th percent of the silver remains when the lead chloride begins to precipitate sorry, out. I not multiply that by 100. It's a negative. It's a small number. Okay? So that's how much will remain. That's the percent of the silver remaining. A very, very, very tiny percent of the silver will still be in. So as I'm adding chloride, silver precipitates, silver precipitates, silver precipitates, silver precipitates, until it's almost all gone. Then finally the lead begins to precipitate. Okay? So what we're going to do in our lab on Friday, just alluding to it, to show how this is going to come into play. Your job is going to be to determine the percent Cl minus in a mixture. And the mixture is going to be a mixture of NaCl and NaNO3. Okay? So we're going to dissolve this down into our flask. So this, this, and this aren't going to do anything. They're all spectator ions. So I'll have my Cl minus in here. I'm going to begin adding, I'm actually going to begin adding silver nitrate to it. Now, just for the record, silver nitrate is very expensive. 25 grams of it, which is less than an ounce, weighs at the cost of approximately $125 to $150. So we got to use this sparingly. Is that including our lab fee? That's your lab fee pays for this, yes. Okay? But it's a great lab. So the silver is going to begin to precipitate this out, precipitate this out, but we have to know when all the silver is pretty much gone. So we have to have an indicator of some kind. So we're going to add in a small amount of some potassium chromate. But this again is a spectator ion, potassium. So we're gonna have some chromate ion floating around in there. Well, the silver is gonna preferentially precipitate out the chlorine, just like it did with this one. It's gonna bond with the chlorine before it does the chromate. White precipitate, white precipitate, white precipitate, white precipitate. But as soon as this begins to precipitate, which is a bloody red precipitate, dark, dark red, blood red precipitate, as soon as we see any faint color of red, we're going to stop. That's going to be our indicator. So then we're going to know at that point most all of your chloride has precipitated out. So then we can do the math and figure out if we know the molarity of this and the volume of this, we'll know how many moles of this, we'll know basically then how many moles of that, then we can uh, do the molarity. We can get the gram, then we can get the grams of this, and we know how many, you know, the percentage of our solid. We have to have the indicator, some way to know 
when all the silver is gone, all the pardon me, all the chloride is precipitated out. But it's selective precipitation, so you can you can separate different ions based upon their KSP. It's a way of separating two things if you know what their KSP is. Okay, so. Okay, so let's just go ahead, while I'm looking for another problem, I want you to go ahead and do V2, V2. I think, did we not do all of A, oh, or did I just say we knew how to do A already? Okay, so why don't we go ahead and do all of A, one, two, and three, and then do B2, because we've already done one and three now. Thank you. 
KSC is just Lucky. I did that first. You did? Yes. Freaking loser. So you've had a mole mass this whole time? You don't need mole mass. Oh yeah, you do. Never mind. <laughs> Did you go to the uh, Filmy Awards? Is that the day? Hmm. Did you just do us a trick up? Yes. Did you see? Yeah. And you haven't cut it? Fourteen bucks. Yeah. Fourteen bucks. Fourteen bucks. Fourteen 
Ten bucks for a crab. I'm gonna have to go feed him up. Yeah, I know. It's gonna be the kind of hair. I don't know. It's disgusting. I like when his hair was all wet. Nice. Mmm. 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 Yeah, I did that. I got x squared, and I said that he go to x squared, square root of it. Okay, so you can write this over 143. 0.3. Okay, and that's it. And then divide that by 0.1. That's a normal space. Yeah, divide that by 0.1. Divide that by 0.1. Dude, I got it. Nice. For me, dude. I got it. I understand. I'm already past that. I'm talking about numbers. Yeah, you divide by 0.1. Yeah, you divide by 0.1. That's why it's 1,000. Yeah, that's why it's 1,000. It's not asking for 1,000. Yeah. You have to put that's in the middle of it. Just do divide by point one. No. That works. You multiply by ten. Why do you, dude? Molarity is moles over liters. And liters in this case. Divide by point one. Multiply by ten. Same thing. Divide by point one. Okay. So I got. That's what I thought was the answer. Rohan, square root of that. I guess. <coughs> so you take it's molarity. So you take the um, grams of a grams molar mass. Oh, it's actually for the and whole thing. Then then I know that's why I think. Dude, it's, 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 it's so much. So like it's not asking for AG plus. Or CO minus. You mess me up every day. Uh, Nobody I think it has to be the same thing, right? Where do you get those? Library. No, they missed that. Library. Yeah. Did you say library? Yes. Library. It's actually. Oh, it was wrong? Library. Library. No, I've had. Library is so hard to say. How much are we talking for a library? That's no, nothing now. Live. 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 Well, you have zero work, so I can't check. Oh, I, I didn't check it. I'll, I'll just you must show work. <sighs> you don't show work at all. You go for one step, like skip four of them. Oh, wait, never mind. What's <laughs> this? This is year 2001, is it not? It is. It is. Where's there a 2D? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yo, that ought to be one easy money point. Free money, free money, free money. That needs to be free money. Crunching, crunching. Uh, you must put the charges though. Without the charges, you get zero. That's a bitch. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, when we go to part two, part two has nothing to do with KSP. It's just a molarity problem. Okay? So you have 8.9 times 10 to the minus fifth grams of AGCL in how much? 100 milliliters. So that's just molarity is what units? Moles over liters. Moles over liters. So 100 milliliters, you know, is how many liters? 0 0.1. 0 0.1. So just, I would just do that conversion just like that. Shouldn't be over the molar mass. Well, I'm not done yet. This is my, oh. I'm just, this is what Sorry. I'm, this is what I'm starting with. I thought. Okay. I know that molarity is going to be moles per liter. So rather than putting 100 milliliters and then showing my 1,000 and all that kind of stuff, I just move the decimal place right there. Now, there's, again, multiplication, division, or commutative, there's different ways to do this. You can find moles and then choose in a second step to divide it by the liters or the 100 milliliters and, and do multiple steps. I'm just going to say this is my starting. I have grams per liter, but I need moles per liter. So now what must I do? Divide by the molar mass. Use the molar mass, but I'm going to use my units, and I'm going to say one mole over 143.35 grams. Actually, it might come out to 34. Uh, I got 6.21. Uh, the molar mass? No, not for the molar mass. Okay, so when you divide all that out, <coughs> negative 10? I think so. I got negative 6. Negative 6 seems to be a more popular answer. Y'all, putting it into the calculator is not supposed to be the difficult part. Okay? So that's just molarity. Now, again, you could have done this division, found moles, and then divided moles by 0.1 liter or divided by 100 milliliters and then times 1,000 milliliters over one liter. You know, however you wanted to do it. Now, now that I know the molar solubility, since it's for, for that's the molarity of this, uh, what does it say? Calculate the molar, yeah, that's the molarity of the AGCL. For every one of these that dissolves, how many of those do I get? For every one of these, how many of those do I get? One. How many of those do I get? One. So my KSP expression is equal to AG plus times CL minus. Well, they give you that KSP, 8.9, oh, to calculate the value of the KSP, that's what we're looking for. It's equal to 6.21 times 10 to the minus 6. Can, are you good enough where I can just say squared? This, for every one of these, one of those goes in, one of those goes in. So whatever the concentration of this, which is what we just found, that's going to be the concentration of this, and it's going to be the concentration of that. So I just plug them into these two values. It's the same number. So that squared turns out to equal? 3.8 times 10 to the minus Okay, now the units on that would be molarity squared, but we don't care. Now notice, that that is at 10 degrees. What? So I square that you're not supposed to square. Which one did you square? Are you supposed to square? Which one? You're squaring. You're squaring. Oh, okay. This times this. It's the same number though. So we're we're looking for this value. Notice that in the previous problems, the KSP was always 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10. But that's always assumed to be at 25 degrees. This is at 
10 degrees. So which number is bigger? 25 degrees. So more soluble at 25 degrees than 10 degrees. So these KSB values are very temperature dependent. So as you increase the temperature, what happens to the solubility? If I'm increasing the temperature, what's happening to my solubility? It's increasing, right? So where would heat then have to go into this equation? On the left. Because I'm going to go heat plus, that means it's going to drive, as I increase the temperature, it's going to drive the reaction to where more dissolves. So if the solubility goes up with an increase in temperature, it's an endothermic reaction. Le Chalier's principle is going to push it to the right to be more dissolved, more separated. Because the solubility increases with temperature, okay, as I increase the temperature, it must be an endothermic reaction because it's driving the reaction to the right. Le Chalier's principle says, as I add heat, it's going to go this way. If, if the solubility decreased, heat would be over here. And when we increased heat, it would push the reaction here to where more would precipitate out. Okay? So because the solubility is increasing, it's going up. I know heat has to be over here because the, the reaction is being driven to the right by adding heat. So it's an endothermic reaction. All right, we just got to work a boatload of problems. We got this. saw my desk. Oh, <laughs> 